Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. Canadian death spiral. Biden's border crisis. Well, we all know about that. Could it be getting worse? Potentially. The big one. Is everyone preparing for the big one? What could be the big one? And butch-coated space queen? Sigma Tiger all up in your grill. Like and subscribe. Let's get this mask off. 10,000 likes, 10,000 subs, 10,000 something, and this thing's coming off. All right, what's happening in the world today? Well, Canada's military is facing a death spiral on recruitment, the minister says. Minister of Defense, I'm sure. <clears throat> Canadian Forces is facing a death spiral when it comes to recruitment. Even as the government is constrained on more defense, Spending, Defense Minister Bill Blair says. Blair made those remarks after speaking to a crowd attending the Ottawa Conference on Security and Defense on Thursday, though stressed the government's commitment to spend more on defense. Yeah, because we're sending all of it to the Ukraine. 300 million here, 100 million there, no sweat. Uh, <clears throat> if what you have been doing for decades is no longer working for you, you can't just keep doing it, the Global News Parliamentary Bureau Chief and the West Bloc host Mercedes Stevenson, who moderated a question and answer period with Blair. Over the past three years, more people have left than have entered. That is frankly a death spiral for the Canadian Armed Forces. We cannot afford to continue at that pace. We got to do something differently. So, what's been happening in the past three years? Like a, a major push towards DEI. They want to include everybody, a more diverse and equal workforce. Well, why, uh, why isn't it working? Well, maybe because before it was uh, mostly white males who joined the military. And you guys been saying that, you know, white, whiteness is a problem. Colonialism, wokeness uh, is taking over. And uh, woke and white do not rhyme. So guess what? You're pushing away uh, the classic uh, uh, recruit in uh, the idea of getting more a diverse group of people, a more colorful group of people. And uh, no one's interested. They don't want to be in the military. They're not fit for military duty mentally, let alone physically likely. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, so what are you going to do? The facts are before us, but at the same time, we have to spend more on defense. Spend, spend, spend the liberal way. Our economic plan is about building more homes faster, making life more affordable, and creating more good jobs, she said. All right, uh, <clears throat> so announcing the budget was Deputy Prime Minister and Finance Minister Chrystia Freeland. And uh, <clears throat> Biden just came out with their budget, a massive like $2.38 trillion budget. So I'm, I can only assume that the Liberal government's going to come out with something extraordinary and ridiculous for their budget as well. Uh, New Mexico man dies of the plague. Here's what we know. Well, we talked about the plague uh, actually uh, being back. Is it back? No. Nah, well, it's been back. It hasn't really gone away, but it's not a big deal. Lincoln County man died from his human plague this week, according to the New Mexico Department of Health. <clears throat> the man's name was not released to the media. The Department of Health said it would conduct outreach in Lincoln County to determine if the disease poses any risk to others in the area. The plague is typically transmitted to humans through the bites of infected fleas, but can also be transmitted through contact with rodents or dead animals. While the plague is serious illness, it can be treated if the symptoms, which vary depending on the type of plague, are recognized early. According to the CDC, people can reduce their chance of contracting the plague by reducing rodent habitat around their homes, treating pets for fleas, and wearing appropriate bug spray when camping or in areas where you may come into contact with fleas. The first reported case of the bubonic plague this year was reported on February 12th in Oregon man who was believed to have caught the disease from his cat. And we reported on that. <clears throat> the plague wiped out at least a third of Europe's population in the Middle Ages, but officials said there's no cause for concern today. Not at all, said Dr. Robert Bollinger, the Raj and uh, Kamla Gupta professor of infectious disease at John Hopkins University Bloomberg School of Public Health. Uh, it's not unusual to have an isolated case of bubonic plague, Bollinger told USA Today. It's serious when it happens, but it's treatable if you catch it early enough. Bollinger said 80% of the cases in the U.S. occur in the Four Corners area, New Mexico, Utah, Colorado, and Arizona. Do the area's concentration of rodent populations. There you have it. 
Roughly 30 billion could be slashed from real estate agents' commissions. Fed economists pose solution to the anomaly in the American housing market. Yeah, so apparently uh, the commissions that these real estate agents garner in the U.S. is sometimes double, triple what it is standard in other countries. I don't know what it is. Uh, Canada, uh, you know, four or five percent. You might run into a six percent in the city, perhaps. Uh, I don't know. But anything under five percent is probably unlikely. Buying a home is expensive these days, but not just because of sky high prices and burdensome mortgage rates. Costly commissions for real estate agents are eating into home buyers' bottom lines, too. In fact, Americans pay roughly 100 billion in real estate commissions annually, according to 2020. Three Keith, Bryant, and Woods analyst report, but the good news, at least for anyone who isn't a real estate agent, is a new working paper titled Real Estate Commissions and Home Buying suggests that roughly 30 billion of U.S. real estate agents' commissions could be slashed by using a new compensation model. And here lies the issue. I was talking to someone the other day about selling their home, and they uh, were very reluctant to get a real estate agent. They have never sold a home, so they don't know the process. And <clears throat> I advise them that uh, it, if you are retired or you don't have work and you don't have a very busy schedule, then yeah, sure, you could go about doing it. It's going to take a lot of research to make sure you do it right, following all the regulations. You're going to need a lawyer. You can't get away without that. And uh, <clears throat> they said, well, I don't believe they should get paid based off the value of my house. They shouldn't get a commission. It should be like a flat rate. I was like, okay, well, what would be a reasonable flat rate? And uh, they said, well, you know, maybe $4,000. And I said, okay, yeah, that sounds great. So how many houses would you have to sell per year to make a certain level of money? You know, whether the size of it. <clears throat> so the truth is, is that uh, a commission allows the real estate agent to have a meaningful existence. You know, you can choose to sell what houses you like, choose to help whom you like, and you will receive a commission based off of that. <clears throat> Perhaps this is something different. Let's have a look. In the but the point was, a base level commission, imagine it was like $1,000 and you sold 17 houses. That's extraordinary. That's a house a month. Congratulations. And you make $17,000, not a livable wage. So it doesn't really work like that, right? It's a lot of work goes into being a real estate agent. You know, there's uh, photos, video, drone, uh, staging the home, perhaps. You know what I mean? You may have to bring furniture in if it's a big city or something like that if you live in a small town you probably get away with doing none of that stuff and therein lies the issue when you go to sell a house if it's up for sale for one day and it sells uh, how can you justify paying a real estate agent what do they do <clears throat> in the paper richmond federal reserve bank senior economist boris grulushki uh, and vice president research zhu wang argue that the u.s model for real estate commission is puzzling and an anomaly when compared to with other systems abroad the pair note that the home sellers in the uk ireland netherlands singapore sweden Norway pay less than two percent in commission to the real estate agents on average compared to the 5.5 percent in the u.s according to a 2015 study as for buyers a large portion of many countries including australia canada and denmark purchase properties without agent representation while 80 percent 87% of home buyers use an agent in the U.S., according to National Association of Realtors data. That's a huge percentage of Americans choosing to use buy-side agents, considering half of all buyers find their own homes online anyway. Yeah, if you're looking for a home, you don't necessarily need an agent, uh, unless you want to haggle and wheel and deal. And that's probably a lot of what's going on down there. Uh, yeah, so 2%, uh, amazing, and they want to cut at least 30% uh, of the commissions, proposing an a la carte cost-based commission model may increase U.S. home buyers' welfare by more than $30 billion a year. Uh, the a la carte compensation model will require both home buyers and sellers to pay their own agents separately and independent of the final home price in the transaction in order to prevent something called steering, where agents tend to direct their clients away from properties that have low commissions, or one that's not even represented by an agency. Right? Like, why would I bring my client to your private home sale if I'm not going to make any commission off of it? Right? <clears throat> Potentially. So therein lies the issue. All right, uh, let's go ahead and check out uh, Biden's border. What's he got cracking here? Called surge actually fits a pattern of seasonal increases in border crossings. And this surge of immigrants, right wing media will call it an invasion. What exactly constitutes a crisis? A crisis. What you Good say question. is a crisis. Republicans are 100% spreading lies about what is happening at the border. Part of 
this politics of fear that has in some ways been uh, so, so central to the Republican Party and the Republican Party call the Biden border crisis, this idea that he created it. It is really ridiculous that Republicans and others are crying open borders because that's actually not the case. It is the case. Like, he signed a bunch of executive orders, like, the first day he was in there that literally opened up the border to uh, migration. a procedural vote on the bipartisan Senate border bill that failed. The southern border is a mess. A record number of migrants have been crossing. So there it is. As soon as the border bill wasn't signed, as soon as they decided to like kibosh that because it was actually a steaming pile of uh, funding for everything other than the border. Uh, yeah, oh, okay, well, yeah, there's a crisis now and it's because the Republicans wouldn't sign that bill. Mm-hmm. Tearing crisis unfolding along the southern border. Record number of migrants entering the U.S. illegally. Just demonstrating how significant this issue is. I mean, we're looking every day at the invasion of migrants, and they're three years later. It's an invasion now. Republicans blocked a bipartisan border package. Killed by Republicans in the House. They blocked the bill. And it was a bipartisan bill. Republicans latched onto this issue for political reasons. Capitalizing on a serious problem. The president is actually trying to solve the problem that exists that most Americans ignore exists. <laughs> so yeah, there you have it. It's all the, we, the, it's, it's the Republicans' fault. They're the ones using the fear-mongering. They're the ones uh, telling everyone <clears throat> what to do and how to do it. Absolutely. Driving schools selling shortcuts to insurance discounts and faster road test investigation reveals schools submit false information to government saying drivers completed 40 hours of training. Yeah, uh, totally saving themselves money and time. Uh, many Ontario driving instructors are willing to be paid to help falsify documents saying students took driving classes when they didn't. Yeah, these are just regular dudes, okay? And you can anyone can be a driving school instructor. I'm pretty sure you just go ahead and apply. And they say, sure, yeah, we need those. Go ahead and uh, get a sticker printed and magnetize it onto your car so you can peel it off after you decide to quit because you hate it. <clears throat> anyway, to obtain a BDE certificate, a new driver must complete 10 hours of in-car lessons, 20 hours of in-class theory, 10 hours of homework with the driving school. It typically costs between $650 and $1,500 and the time. Uh, when new drivers can prove they've completed a BDE course in Ontario, it makes them eligible to take the road test sooner, and they may receive insurance discounts up to 30% once they have their license. So there is a lot of incentive uh, to get this course. Uh, those sorts of discounts are also available to those who complete similar courses in Alberta, Newfoundland, and Labrador, British Columbia, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, Prince Edward, and pretty much all across the country. Uh, <clears throat> fees range from $150 to $400, for facilitating uh, the instructor. Forge documents as well, like there you go. So anyway, uh, yeah, humans, guess what? They're corruptible. And especially low level uh, people making no money who are uh, free with no oversight, they will take. One thing you may notice in the news is that like uh, town managers or treasurers of nonprofit organizations are just people who are like chosen because no one wants to do these jobs, no one thinks they're qualified. Just need to be honest and be able to count and just do it twice and you can be a treasurer. That's it. But, you know, people see these advantages. Oh, I get to count money. Oh, there's money here. I'm going to take a dollar for a coffee. Oh, no one noticed that last month? Well, I'm going to take $5 to buy a lottery ticket. And if I win, I'll, I'll buy the office a bunch of stuff. And then guess what? You're buying Oxycontin and cigarettes and dope and slanging money into your uh, slot machines. <clears throat> Luxury bunkers to tactical vehicles, the ultra-rich are preparing for the big one. And what could it be? Builders of fortified homes say increase in applications are up in recent years. Uh, Zuckerberg, yeah. Uh, CEO of Meta, one of the richest individuals on the planet, was building a $100 million U.S. compound in Hawaii. It's 5,000 square feet to be specific concrete walls and escape hatch. Has nine-figure uh, renovation. He, he's growing beef on there, apparently, indoors with all kinds of special science. What does this tell us? It's a sign that at least some of the ultra-rich are anxious about global events and are making contingency plans for the big one, whatever that may take. Yeah, so apparently uh, down in New Zealand, there's been a whole bunch of billionaires buying uh, property down there, buying islands. Well, why? What's the elevation of these islands compared to the ocean? Uh, are they expecting ocean rise? Are they expecting war? What's the benefit of being on an island as opposed to being landlocked? 
So we have Putin in North Korea, what's going on in Gaza. There's lots of inquiries. Yeah, so it used to be a right-wing thing. We covered it yesterday that it's becoming more diverse. You know what I mean? There's lesbians getting involved with this now. Um, yeah, so go ahead and prep because the big one could be coming. Heads up. Is calling someone white a racist slur? This is what the experts say. I don't think so. You know, someone called me white. I'd be like, yeah. I mean, that's an accurate representation of uh, the color of my skin if you were to put it on a wheel. But a peach, perhaps, would fit better. Or uh... Anyway, one of Australia's most well-known sporting figures, Matilda's Captain Sam Kerr, has been charged with racially aggravated harassment for reportedly calling a British police officer a stupid white bastard. Stupid meaning unintelligent. White would represent the color. And a bastard meaning that uh, his mother had him out of wedlock. SBS News has not been able to confirm the accuracy of the quote, which was reported by The Sun and The Guardian in the United Kingdom. The Australian is also reporting that Kerr will dispute the phrase, claiming instead that she called the officer a stupid white cop. She is reportedly not denying she uses the term white. Yeah, so therein lies the issue with the racially uh, charged, uh, aggravated harassment. The case has raised questions about whether a white person can be racially abused amid uh, rising complaints of reverse racism, uh, which is an insane thing to call it, uh, anti-white discrimination. There you go. Uh, the Matildas and the Chelsea striker, who is of Indian descent and who has in the past campaigned against racism, has pleaded not guilty to the charge of using threatening, abusive, or insulting words or behavior that caused harassment, alarm, or distress to police officers, PC Lowell. Uh, the charges relate to an incident in London suburb of Twickingham on January 30th last year during a dispute about a taxi fare. Hmm. Yeah, okay, so uh, here's the deal. If your intent is to hurt someone based off of their race, like, you know, I'm pointing out that you are a uh, white cop. What, what, what's, the, what's the point of calling him out? So, like, if he was an Indian cop, would you be like, you dirty Indian cop? Like, is calling them out by their actual nationality a problem? Well, if you get it wrong, is, is that a problem? Like a black person? Or perhaps someone of darker complexion. If, uh, for example, I was to say uh, someone is maybe from the Middle East. And I said, you African uh, dirtbag. Would he then, like, is that racial? Because I thought he was from Africa? Well, the point is that I shouldn't call him anything with regards to uh, his physical characteristics like that. Because it's a faux pas. That's a no-no. That's a nene. You know, so do not uh, do that because the culture war will begin all up in your grill. So don't point out anything with regards to someone's color. You know, just call them a, a cop. Refer, well, in, you can't even refer to them as animals sometimes because, uh, you know, if in the past someone did it, then, then it's racial. You know, like because of Africa and black people, like, uh, you know, if you reference a gorilla or a monkey or something like that, then that's insane to do towards a black person. Well, what about a white person? Like, it's cracker or honky. So why cracker? Because they're white like a cracker. Honky because uh, they're nasally in their voice. So, you know, it's not as bad. And why would you call a black person a monkey? Why? Because their 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 complexion is dark or because they uh, may be from rainforest or jungle or whatever like I don't even understand like they're not up in trees and stuff you know I really don't know so referring to animals and to humans and stuff like that like you can't your name calling's wrong anyway she should have said why are you doing this to me you uh, uh, individual right like we're not allowed to say anything anymore but uh, calling someone white or black or brown or red or yellow anything other than white is kind of considered faux pas like if you were to call uh, the colloquial reference of red towards an indigenous person, that's kind of like, no, nah, you shouldn't do that. Black is kind of like, you know, well, some people of African ancestry don't want to be called African-Americans. They're Americans now. They're not. So why, like, distinguish that? So call them black. Well, then Asians at one point were called yellow. You know, or, or the Orientals, which is also incorrect, were yellow. So there's white, there's yellow, there's brown, there's black, there's red. So I guess at some point they didn't like it, you know. And they said, no, I'm not red, I'm not yellow, that's inappropriate. But we'll still use black and we'll still use white. And we'll still use a little bit of brown too, okay? Because I've seen people with brown pride tattooed across their chest. 
You know what I mean? And no one's bat or deny. It was on ESPN and TV, TSN, all kinds of sports. You know what I mean? Like, so race doesn't exist, really. There's only one human race. That's a fact. My saying is, uh, remove the skin, we're the same within. That's the tiger's uh, saying. You know what I mean? We're just blood, bones, and guts. That's it. So who cares what color your skin is because you lived closer to the sun or closer to the middle of the earth. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Hades collapsed. There's cannibals all over the gaff. Let's have a look at some of these images. Here they are, just smashing a car. Walking around, mimicking uh, having an AK-47. Just looks like a lot of looting. It doesn't look like there's any pavement going on there. Uh, fires strewn about someone with a wheelbarrow looking to fill it up with loot here we have a young individual as well with a stick fashioned like a uh, rifle and there you go Hades collapsed the prison is no longer in the country the ports are officially closed cannibal gangs are besieging the national palace in Port-au-Prince and Elon says it's the end of days this is bleaker than Mad Max and now they want to import this into America welcome to the migrant nation. Missouri teen arrested after slamming girl's head on the ground could be tried as adult. If you don't know about this, uh, turn your uh, eyes, avert your vision, because this is disturbing. Team Z has the look. Uh, if you haven't seen this, it's absolutely disturbing. This is thug behavior at the highest. Check it out. Mm, it's coming right now. Yeah, damn is the correct word. So you can see there does seem to be a level of concern with the uh, female perpetrator as she notices the woman hasn't moved. And now she begins to seize. So it's an absolutely disturbing event there, uh, seeing children fight like that, teenagers. Uh, she is going to be tried as a minor as of now. Uh, if the uh, child, female who had her head slammed into the... Uh, pavement condition worsens she's in critical condition currently right now and we all pray for her um if her condition worsens and she passes away then likely they're going to try that individual as an adult and uh so she should be because that was absolutely uh inhumane okay like if you're capable of doing that to another human then you're a monster okay deep within you you're corrupted you have a black heart okay and that's a fact that's all there is to it if you can do that to a human then you are evil and you're demonic we were along huntsville father facebook posts on biological male butch coated space queer space camp worker goes viral uh, i have no idea what this is about huntsville father's incense social media post is going viral after discovering a worker at huntsville u.s space and rocket center space camp is a biological man with colorful social media facebook post from huntsville based clay yarborough uh, that is circulated around social media states that Yarborough was planning on sending his daughter to space camp before discovering that a self-identified transgender individual, Molly Bowman, would act as team lead and a hall monitor in the girls' dormitories. Okay, fair enough. Post eventually blew up, getting shared thousands of times across the platform. Yarborough also showed screenshots that appear to be from Bowman's Twitter page. The page is private, however. Screenshots from the Twitter page contain pictures of Bowman in space camp regalia, along with a lot of sexual commentary. So that's the last thing you want to do is send your kid uh, somewhere who is very sexual uh, publicly. So here, uh, yeah, Momo, they, she, level 28, proud, trans, femme, intersex, non-binary, unseely, changeling, art omancer, Horace, did nothing wrong, profile art by me. Yarborough told 1819 News that he was planning to send his daughter to the space camp when Bowman's identity was revealed. Yarborough claimed he heard stories from other parents who claimed that Bowman had access to female floors in previous camps. All I thought was that Bowman was a hall monitor, but then I heard that he had walked into the girls' room. Yarbrough told 1819 News, I thought that was extreme. I wouldn't think that kind of thing would happen at space camp. In recorded conversation between Yarbrough and space camp vice president Robin Soprano, Bowman was confirmed as an employee and that Bowman would have access to the girls' floor. Through the nearly nine-minute conversation, Soprano gave evasive answers to Yarbrough's questions. I have only females that go to the female floor. Is that specific person allowed to go to the female floor if they identify as a female or... Are they allowed on that floor? Sir, these are not questions that we can ask our staff specifically in the way that you're asking them. I can assure you that we are following all state and federal laws. 
Uh, is Molly Bowman allowed on female floors? I have an employee by that name that you have stated that's as much as I can share with you right now. I am telling you that I'm not going to give you specifics about an employee. Uh, so yeah, basically they wouldn't tell him because uh, he's terrified. He knows something is going on and he is terrified that he's going to get in trouble. But we're, pe we're doing the state laws and stuff like you're not going to cancel me. I don't want to lose my job. I'm inclusive. I, I, I'm diverse and I'm equal. No, you're not. Where you're is allowing a sexual, potential sexual predator. Like, imagine you went to a cisgender, heterosexual male's page who was uh, going to be your space camp counselor. And he was like, yo, I'm a giga chat. I'm on the weekends just scoring. And uh, not just chicks, but also drugs. Like, I party and I, like, slay. My body count is this. Like, you'd be like, ooh, I don't want my uh, child to be influenced by that individual. There you have it. Thank you for joining the Sigma Tiger today on Sigma Tiger News. Go ahead, like, subscribe. 10,000 likes, 10,000 subs, whatever it takes. 10K, the mask comes off. We'll reveal the real true monster. Sigma Tiger, signing out.